a moonlit walk. The crescent moon's light cut through wisps of cloud that dreamily slow danced above in the sweet summer breeze. Leaves fluttered on the branch and the soft rustle of the forest canopy enticed listeners into a land of languid dreams and calm seas. Blossom delicately descended to caress the lush grass below. Through a narrow, well-worn path, a couple walked through the idyllic scene around them, drawing in every sight and smell, absorbed in their midnight quest. The locals will probably think we're crazy, Emma chirped, her smile beaming radiantly as she bobbed along. Liam, her fiancé of three months, grinned as he turned and watched the energy brimming inside of her. Or well, they might just think we're doggers. Laughing, she slapped him on the arm. You're terrible. Both tried to subdue their laughter, sniggering like teenagers as they moved deeper into the entrancing beauty of nature. I haven't heard an owl yet. Neither have I. Are there owls around here? Liam had absolutely no idea. But in the countryside, surely there must be. Not sure two inner-city kids with hay fever are the experts needed to answer that. Emma chuckled and pressed up next to Liam, and they carried on, led by the light of his torch. We could always Google about the owls. No, come on. Let's just discover things. It's like reading the spoilers. Emma already had surreptitiously taken her phone from her pocket and waited at the unlock screen. Can I at least check whether there's a docking site nearby? Hey, if there's one, you can go there on your own. Emma looked up at him and put on a most winning smile. I always do anyway, and pecked Liam on the cheek. Sometimes she said things so dryly that for a moment he couldn't be sure she was joking. Thankfully, she always let out a little ring of laughter just to let him know. I'm glad we came here. It's nice to get away for a bit. <sighs> away from my dad in particular, Emma said with genuine enthusiasm. He's not that bad. The path began to bend to the left, running alongside a large pond. Liam wondered if it was for fishing. Emma was more concerned as to whether she could swim naked in it. You, she said, wagging a finger at Liam, did not spend your first 16 years under his roof. A shagging would have been really weird if I had. Emma hit him on the arm again. I'm actually sort of serious. I love him. Always will, but he really is a control freak. Mm, can't say I've noticed, came the reply, utterly unconvincing. You're a lying bastard, Mr. Walsh. He pulled her close against him. Yes, my love, I am. She pulled her tongue and held on tight to him. Neither of them could quite believe the serenity they found themselves surrounded by. They weren't flanked by streetlights, nor assaulted by the smell of exhaust fumes clinging in the nighttime air. They couldn't hear a constant hum of traffic, or the occasional wail of a siren. It felt as though the world was just the both of them, and nothing else. They'd already ceded control of the wedding to the parents. Even the guest list was in their hands. They had decided that a tactical retreat was best for their collective sanity, and whilst their families were paying, they could tolerate the indignity, as there was little chance they could hope to pay for things themselves. But everything had begun to get frantic, and so they packed enough things for a week away and randomly pointed to a place on the map. You think your mum will be coping at the moment? Emma inquired, thoughts rolling through her head. Absolutely. Liam's reply exuded confidence. My mum will just sit back and let my dad bicker with your dad. A pair of them are ridiculous. Shaking his head, he quickly pictured them strangling each other. They are so competitive. Tell me about it. I'm amazed we haven't walked in on them comparing their willies. Emma broke into another fit of laughter. Thank you, lovely fiancé, for that charming image. It's not too late to change your mind, he joked. Don't be silly, Emma said gently. I knew how disgusting you were before you proposed. Really? How? An eyebrow raised in thought. He hoped he looked sufficiently comical. Let's just say that you didn't always use incognito mode in your browser. Liam nervously cleared his throat. <clears throat> anyway, they both shared another laugh as they went further along the path, the trees offering thicker coverage as they progressed. The light became more scant and the smell of the water and the flowers swirled in the air about them. Not a ripple crossed the pond's surface, a perfect mirror of the night sky. They both found themselves drawn into the unreal clarity of the image. You couldn't help but feel as though it were a second world you could step into. Slowing to a halt, Emma stared more intently at the sight. My word, it's really beautiful, isn't it? Liam nodded his agreement as equally transfixed. We certainly wouldn't get views like this back at home. I have to take a picture. Emma felt so energised by it all. She needed a reminder. Liam liked to just enjoy the moment instead of messing with his phone, but 
He knew everyone was different. He just smiled as he watched the kindest woman he'd ever known derive sheer joy from taking a picture of a pond. This was one of the reasons he loved her so. Everything was so utterly guileless with her, so unguarded, and she could elicit that in him, a part of himself he thought he'd lost in his youth. As she took the fifth picture in about ten seconds, Liam saw movement by her feet, shining the torch over, a small frog, covered in a psychedelic patination, was moving over to Emma's feet. Hey, Em. She slid her phone back into her pocket and began to turn around. Yes, love? Ooh, watch yourself. She stopped moving and looked down to where Liam's torch shone. Wow, look at the colours, so unreal. Maybe it's one of those you lick and trip out. Looking to try. He pulled out his tongue out of playfully. Heck no, that one time I tried LST was bad enough. I was convinced the couch was made of hot chocolate brownies. His raised eyebrows were a fair response. You must have noticed the teeth marks on the arm. I, I thought a dog did that. No, d definitely me while shit-faced. They laughed so hard it almost hurt. By the end, Emma's throat ached and Liam's cheeks were sore. Oh dear. She got her breath back. After that, I decided to choose a much better vice. The exaggerated wiggling of the eyebrows almost set Liam off once more in laughter. But, my god, his face was aching. Oh, he winked. I know all about that. Emma Snort laughed and they just looked at one another. Liam felt such a warmth in his chest and, for about the millionth time, he reminded himself of how obscenely lucky he was. Anyway, I'm going to get a photo of Mr. Frog and then we can call it a night. She clicked her tongue and got her phone out once more. Bugger! She stopped. He's gone. Liam roved the torch around the surrounding area. He can't have gone far, we'll find him. He started up the path again, side by side, looking for the frog that had captivated Emma. She loved bright colours, being immersed in them, seeing them about her every day. She decorated their bedroom and, to Liam, it was a garish migraine in wallpaper and paint, but seeing how happy it made her, he found himself quickly not minding it at all. I just saw something up there. Liam moved his torch and saw another quick flicker of movement. He was starting to enjoy the pursuit as Emma's enthusiasm grew. He's so fast! Emma exclaimed. You're not kidding! Their casual walk had now become a very brisk one, dangerously on the verge of becoming a jog. I bet you he's deliberately messing with us, Emma said, chuckling. They'd already covered perhaps two or three hundred metres before the torch finally settled on the creature, who had decided to stop near the water's edge. Both of them were already breathing a bit faster in complete simpatico. Unbeknownst to the other, the same thought came into their minds. Damn, I'm out of shape. Okay, just keep the light on him whilst I get a pick. Emma had just got the camera app open when the frog leapt again, right onto a lily pad which was sat in the shallows at the edge of the water. He's definitely doing this on purpose. If he jumps again, I'm going to have to tell him off. She shuffled to the edge and lined up the shot, doing her absolute best not to disturb him. The colours, they almost defied the screen of her phone. They seemed to shift and swirl, completely hypnotising anyone who would lay eyes upon it. The frog leapt into the water. Emma cursed and as she tried to peer into the depths, she lost her footing, slipping on the wet grass, slamming her foot into a large stone, rolling over and skidding into the water. Whoops! Liam rushed over. Y you're okay, Em? She splashed around a bit and fumbled for her phone. I'm... She spat some water out of her mouth. I'm, I'm fine, just... Very clumsy. She pulled a phone out of the shallows. My phone isn't waterproof, is it? To that, Liam just winced and the phone screen shut off. Bugger! It had all of our photos of your mum's 60th on there. She still looked beautiful under the moonlight, albeit wet and a touch dazed. Let's not worry about that right now. Come on, lass, let me help you. Liam stepped very carefully to the edge and offered Emma his free hand, which she clasped firmly. Thank you, kind sir. She tried to raise her foot, but found it stuck. Oh great, now I'm stuck in the mud. No problem. Liam pulled at her arm and tried to raise her out, but nothing was happening. Wow, you, you really are stuck in there. You don't say. She laughed. The ensuing yank was of such force that Emma sank over her foot in a mere second. Liam was launched off his feet and his torch scattered across the ground, the batteries popping out of the body and the light promptly going out. Emma let out a yelp. Through the disorientation, Liam still held onto her hand. His brain knew he had to hold on. Emma began to scream. The suction was pulling her down. Her mind wasn't even giving her time to shout for help. All she knew was that if she let go of Liam, she was going under. She was going to die. 
scrambling through mud and water, Liam fought to get back on his feet. His ears rang and his heart was launching adrenaline to every part of his body as sheer panic consumed him. Emma was being pulled further down, sheer terror in her eyes, as she came closer and closer to being submerged. He roared as his muscles turned to fire, pulling and pulling with every ounce of strength. Emma! He bawled. Water was beginning to splash against her chin, her screams beginning to turn into gurgles. She tried to spit the water out, but more flooded in. She began to kick downwards, stomping on the ground below that would claim her. Liam gave no thought to himself and moved closer so he could grab a hold of her body. He slammed his feet against the bottom of the shallow water and screamed, putting every last bit of strength into this fight. Pain roared in Emma's legs. Liam pulled harder and harder. His muscles were breathing pure acid. His bones felt as though they would break. All he could think was, I can't lose her, I can't! The water was about to swallow her eyes when Liam slammed his feet down again, finding purchase on a small rock. The suction gave way and he ripped Emma from the clutches of the water. He flailed backwards, refusing to let go of Emma, even as they came to dry land. Not even stopping to find his torch, he staggered back to the cottage with Emma in his arms. The next morning, both of them, in a haze, were collected by Liam's friend, Daniel. Little was said on the drive home. They just stayed in each other's arms and thanked God she was alive. But in their minds, they were dwelling on the same thing. The words Emma had spoken after Liam had locked all the doors and propped the bedroom door shut with a chair on her insistence. Liam, dear God, Liam, I'm not crazy. An arm was pulling me down. Life took several months to return to normal and for the memories to become fuzzy, like poorly taken photographs. They decided that the city was where they belonged and the idea of moving to greener lands to raise a family was soon discarded. The wedding, in spite of much pettiness, ended up being a huge success. Over a year later, things had gone back to normal. In fact, better than normal. They were together, in love, and safe. As Liam finished looking through the wedding photos one last time, an email came in from a colleague who worked at the office's IT department. Thankfully, he had managed to work his magic and recover the photographs of his mother's birthday from Em's phone. Hey, Em. Will at work managed to rescue those pictures from my mum's doom. That's great, she called from the kitchen. She'll be so happy to finally see them. It's been long enough. I'll be there in a minute. No rush. He called and went back to the email and started clicking through the myriad of photos. It looked like Will had managed to recover almost everything, including a dodgy home video and rather a lot of selfies. Liam beamed as he looked at the pictures of his beautiful wife. He had never felt so lucky in his life. Scrolling through, he found himself at the end of the camera roll. His face went pale. His hands shook. He reached over to the bin and began to vomit as the room started to spin violently. Emma heard the retching and ran to his side, helping carry him to their bed. Later, he would say it was food poisoning, but there, in the photograph Emma had taken of the lake, a dark figure with long, sinuous arms hovered in the background some 300 metres away, its eyes glistening in the moonlight, staring right at them.